There's a new book that suggests science holds the key to a successful marriage. Marriageology is the name of the book. The Art and Science of Staying Together looks at what research reveals about how to build a strong and lasting relationship. According to a 2017 study, about 50% of American adults are married. And other research found roughly 40 to 50% of married couples in the U.S. eventually divorce. We asked some married people about what makes a happy marriage. Their answer? It takes more, much more, than just love. I believe the trait that makes a successful marriage is commitment. The friendship is uh, most important. Sharing the same goals, the same aims. Always thinking about the other person in anything. Do we have to agree on it? No, of course not. <laughs> communication, trust, and honesty. Our shared values are super important about how we've raised our children. Patience and a sense of humor. We can laugh together, we can do uh, everything. Cook together, together you cook wash together. alone, and I cook alone. <laughs> when we fight, um, it takes patience. You really take responsibility for whatever the argument is. You also need to respect the person. <laughs> it's work, and you have to expect that it's going to work. It's not, the honeymoon is very brief, and then, and then it's life every day, and you work through it. Hey, and, it's honeymoon every day. Not that honeymoon. <laughs> it does sound sweet, all it those couples. So there, yeah. We didn't interview any divorced people. I yes. <laughs> it all seems so easy. Author, it is not, of course, it's an author. Not. Belinda Luscombe wrote Marriageology, the Art and Science of Staying Together. Belinda, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I wanted to start with this. If you're at home on your couch right now and you are thinking of leaving your significant other, <laughs> your answer to those people is don't. Not yet. Why? I, <laughs> I, you know, I have been writing about family for Time magazine for about 10 years, and I get books every week, two books about how to make happy children, how to raise your children happily, probably three books about how to make yourself happy, and I get maybe one book a year on how to make your, how to have a happy marriage. Mm -hmm. And a, a marriage, it's, it's the only relationship you really choose, and it is so key and so fundamental to your happiness. Why not walk away from it? The studies have shown that the longer the, the people who have long marriages have happy marriages. There's a great uh, Harvard study that's looked at 80 years so yeah. far, and they found that the health of men at 80 yeah. is directly correlational to how happy they were with their marriage at 50. But I at the same that. time, you tell people that. this the idea of which we've all been sold, and I, and I would like to do a separate segment one day on why we should teach marriage in high school so people understand what makes up a good marriage. But you, you make a very good point here. You say the, the idea of a soulmate is a myth. There, the, the idea, you cannot find a soulmate. The search for a soulmate is like searching for the only one pair of trousers that would make you happy. You become a soulmate. But, you know, eHarmony and all the, the pop love songs and the movies, they suggest that it's all about, I wasn't anyone till I found you and you completed me. That's not how it happens. <laughs> yeah. You find somebody and you f figure out how to get on with them and you become each other's soulmate as you, as you learn them, as you get better at understanding them, as you get better at loving them. And this is not hard. There's such simple things you can do. One of the things that the research shows that stunned me was if you just learn to say thank, thank you, you to yes. the spouse. Yeah. And it seems to work in two ways. One, the spouse does not feel taken for granted. They yes. feel noticed and seen, even though they're with you every day. And secondly, it changes the perspective, your perspective, because if you look for things to thank them for, it, it means that you can't be taking them for granted and you can't be resentful or become contemptuous. And contempt is the biggest problem. Is a big, big, big marriage. deal breaker. I mean, I wish I'd seen your book when I was younger because I think it's filled with a lot of very good advice and things that really resonated with with me. You know, it was interesting that tape, everyone says, it takes communication, it takes sense of humor, blah, 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 blah. But what I think is so important that you raise is how you fight. Yes. All married couples yeah. fight, yep. yeah. and if they say they're not fighting, they're not telling you the truth, but it's how you fight that makes a difference. And that's what I thought was so important. It's, Contempt is really, really key here. Yeah, it's key, and there's some very simple, very simple changes. When you're fighting, try to never say, 
you always or you never because then people feel under attack defensive. and then yeah. they get defensive and then the wheels come off the bus right. it's much better to simply start with I'm having a problem with or yeah. I find it difficult when or I, I like how you said you should say what I hear you saying is which right. is really unrealistic and when you're in the totally. heat of battle right. you yeah. say right. don't don't do it in the car don't do it when you're hungry don't do it just before bed but when right. do you do it I mean if I tried to schedule a fight <laughs> I, said, I can't do this now I can pencil you in but, for but 60 if you, That's you do it, fight. if you do it just before bed, you tend not to resolve that argument. And I think in a fight, you have to reach some form of resolution. I think it's really important not to fight tired or just, we've learned this from toddlers, you know, that's when they're going to have tantrums, right, yes. when they're tired. So go to bed angry, everything seems much simpler and clearer in the morning. Should you put and a fight on hold? If you, if you can put a fight a on hold if you say, I can't talk about this right now, but I do want to come back to it. And then you have a history of coming back to it. Sometimes it's good to put a fine on hold, but you can't just say, I, I can't deal with this and yeah, walk out. You can't we shut can't. it down. We should point out, she's not only an expert in the book, married 28 years, two months, and 11 days. Yes, yeah. Weirdly described a bit like a prison sentence there. Yeah, know. it is a little, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but some really it's good. It's a beautiful prison. Yeah, I admire how you talk about your husband. You said, I guarantee you, and I know this is true, no matter how great your marriage is, there will come a day where no matter what they do, it just enrages you yeah, so beyond true. reason. That's familiarity for you. <laughs> yes. And you can't have family without it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Belinda Lescombe, thank you so much. The book is Marriageology. It's on sale today.